Hey there, it's Alex from iFixit. Last year, Apple released its first smartphone using an OLED display, the iPhone X, joining Google, Samsung, and LG in their move away from traditional LCDs. Why did Apple hold out so long? What are the differences between these displays, and what does it mean for us in the world of repair? To find these answers, let's get inside and find the difference between an LCD and an OLED display. So let's start by talking about the LCD. The LCD stands for Liquid Crystal Display, and it works by sandwiching a bunch of components together and creating an image as a whole. It all starts here at these LEDs. They form a bright white light that gets reflected off of the back plate and then back through all of these filters through the liquid crystals. The liquid crystals obscure part of the light and let the rest through the color filter, which splits it up into the red, green, and blue that makes up your image. So let's look at how that works in an actual phone. So if I turn on this display and lift up the reflector plate, we can see the very bright white light that bounces down from here and right back into the display. Then that goes through and forms the subpixels. So let's look at that under a microscope. Looking at this display, we can very clearly see the subpixels, the three lines that form each individual pixel. So when the liquid crystal obscures part of the red, green, or blue, it forms different colors to our eyes. Here we can clearly see the blue and the red only using part of the subpixels, while this white area uses all three of the pixels to its full potential. Now that we've learned about LCDs, let's talk about OLED displays. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode, which really highlights the difference between the two. In an OLED display, each individual pixel shines its own light, meaning it doesn't need a backlight, reflector plate, or any of these complicated parts, which leaves us with a very thin, much more flexible display. So let's look at that under a microscope to learn more. Looking at this OLED display, we can really see the difference between LCD and OLED. In the LCD, we saw a very clear red, green, and blue stripe, always lit by the backlight. In this OLED display, we can see the individually lit diodes that are only on when used. So in this black area, we can see that there's absolutely no diodes on right now. This strategy means that the colors are a lot more accurate and it's also way more power efficient. With all these obvious benefits in the OLEDs, why hasn't Apple changed over a lot sooner than they have? Well, it turns out it all has to do with ease of manufacture. LCDs are cheap to make and easy to produce, whereas OLEDs have that organic component, which is really hard to make and not everyone can make it. It turns out that a lot of the manufacturers that have OLED phones are also the ones that produce OLED displays. Apple makes a lot of phones, which means they need a lot of panels. So when they have a small supply, they can only make a limited run of phones, like we saw in the iPhone 10. So what does this mean for repair? Well, looking at LCDs, this is what we know, this is what's everywhere right now. And while they do have a lot of failure points, like the backlight LEDs either failing or becoming uneven or the liquid crystal layer breaking, they're also really cheap to get, which makes the repair also very cheap. OLEDs, on the other hand, have very few failure points, and their really bendy displays also makes them harder to break, meaning that they don't need to be repaired as often. However, they are also more expensive to get, meaning that the repair is also more expensive. But as OLEDs become more popular in the market, we might see their price drop, reaching an equilibrium with the repair market. For more educational content and teardowns, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you next time.